toward the one, the perfection, perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being, united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the messenger, the spirit of guidance. So welcome, dear one. This is the last of the four classes that we're having on opening your presence. Very auspicious title for this time of the year, indeed. And that presence that we're speaking of uh, is something that uh, will widen the opening to it tonight. We will unfold and unfold. And I know Azar Bash has prepared some meditations for us to experience different aspects of that presence. But I'd like to begin with um, referring back to the way that we usually think of presence. We think that we're present to something in this world of duality. We think of it as something other than ourself. So we're present to this other thing. Uh, and there's only so much that can be shared in that kind of uh, opportunity. This could be something we, uh, we feel <clears throat> is given to us that comes from them or him or her. Or it could be presence that we are sending light, perhaps, and sharing our own presence with others. But again, there's this separation kind of feeling with it. And what we're hoping is that we get to a place where it's really uh, one unfoldment in the relational unity aspect of what we've talked about before, where we still have our individuality, but that there is this amazing sharing of those gifts on, both, on all sides. And not only that, but we're gonna be speaking about presence in time, uh, presence in many spaces, uh, realms, and also just in this universe that we are in, far and near, seeing all these that we see as mostly as duality as uh, one sharing, one huge presence. So in order to get to that kind of place, I had thought about, well, if we're thinking about all of this being as one dimensional experience, a multi-dimensional experience, there's a term that I heard of a while back in the book, Spiritual Body, Celestial Earth, that really helps to bring that consciousness of what it would be like to be in a multi-dimensional experience. And that word is in suspense something that is suspended. And in this case, it would be like if there were a ballerina off the surface, that's the key, off of the surface of whatever it is that she was uh, on as a substratum, you might say, that it's something holding her and keeping her in this one dimension. Well, let's say that she is now off of that surface in this, such a way that she's elevated off of it um, but then we need to get it even more multidimensional and feeling that uh, we're not on this substratum of the uh, manifestation, but we're also not in the substratum of a certain time or a certain um, disposition or place, realm, definition of any of those. Um, it is not reflected on a surface. So let's use our imaginations for a minute and thinking what would be uh, a way of thinking of it. Uh, and the ancient Sufis in speaking about it, they thought of it as an image suspended in a mirror. So think of that for a moment, that there's an image and it's, you see it in a mirror, but of course, you know, it's not actually part of that mirror. It's just reflected in that place. <clears throat> so think of a consciousness our consciousness as being such that it is not only manifest in the world here, but that it, because it is elevated and suspended and off of the surface, that now that image is in contact with the past, the future. It's in contact with the realm of the angels, the realm of the jinn. Uh, and so that kind of imaginal 
uh, exercise in us can bring per perhaps that feeling of what it really is, what our experience really is uh, as a human divine being, rather than think of ourselves attached to something that we're, uh, we feel that we are in this year or in this place, and that's all that we are. <clears throat> then the changes that happen to us and the difficulties we have are going to be mitigated incredibly because we know that all the rest of uh, that uh, existence that we are in. Uh, you could say that this is experiencing the soul. You could say that it's experiencing what the Barzakh is like uh, because it is a space that is kind of midway between manifest and uh, beyond manifest or uh, archetypal uh, or imaginary. When it acts, when we act from there, if we're imagining here I am in this uh, suspended situation off of the surface in contact with all of the realms, then that which we do, the things that we accomplish, Let's say that we create something beautiful. That image, that, that experience is not only limited now to the manifest world, it's also feeds or is experienced by all the other kinds, the other realms, all these places, times that I spoke of. Why? Because now we are realizing who we really are as this divine human divine being and it's putting us in our correct place would you like to enter in at this point well i uh, i think in a recent class talked about entanglement uh, previously we had talked about I, I guess from the very beginning we talked about how everything is interconnected with everything else so everything potentially the uh, effects of what we do in this state of Aniraz is describing has the potential to have an impact upon everything else, but then that effect becomes activated or actuated, you could say, when we establish a, a connection, a relationship with uh, what we're experiencing. So that's another way of saying we enter into a state of relational unity. So in this space, uh, that we're freed from our usual uh, sense of ourself being located in this particular time and space, we have the freedom of all the possibilities of connecting with, like Ravani Ra was saying, things in the past, things in the future, things in uh, realms more subtle than the one that uh, we started in. Uh, but then we can use our desire uh, and our uh, faculty of the creative imagination to establish this kind of connection that can bring something forth as a result of, uh, of being in that state. Well said. And in this kind of uh, consciousness and this kind of focus, it is uh, <clears throat> possible to, uh, as I'm would like to say treasuries to dip into those treasuries of love, harmony, and beauty. <clears throat> and you might say in those realms in which they exist. Uh, and these things that are pure possibilities, uh, as we ex experience them in that realm, now can be made more manifest, can be made more real through this being this human divine being that is in the state, which is now again connected back to all that we really are and can make this connection that Azerbaijan was speaking about uh, when things can become, uh, what was the term? Entangled. Entangled. So that, uh, you know, we say, well, yes, I know that I am related to. Uh, the planets. I am related to all the solar dust and all the radiance of the entire universe, but that's kind of a mental 
situation. Uh, to get the real entanglements that he's speaking about, it's really like your own family, uh, that you are really related to them. It's not just something that you're making up, that you are really having that deep experience of relatedness. Uh, but that happens more when we are realizing who and where we really are existing. That, uh, like uh, Pirvalite used to say, uh, this is our spacesuit for the planet Earth. You know, and it's a very good spacesuit, and it is very helpful for many different things. But to realize who we really are, we have to uh, go beyond just seeing the external. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> Bonnie Brown mentioned uh, possibilities. So, <laughs> in the state we are, we could say we are in a space of all possibilities of something that could become. So, let me use the example of the internet. So, those of you watching this are using some device, you're using your phone, using a laptop, iPad, or something like that. And you have had to establish a connection over the internet in order to be able to watch this, whether it's live or watching the recording later on. And when you uh, turned your device on and got into your browser, you were opening up the space of possibilities of all the information that's con contained on the internet, billions and billions of links and uh, bits of data and information. But you actuated that by uh, selecting a particular choice, which is what you wanted to tune into. So that's a kind of a technological way of, uh, of saying that you uh, activated the, uh, you turned the possibility of a relationship into an actuality, a relationship out of which something can transpire. So in order for presence to take place, I mean, it sounds kind of trivial, but it's uh, pretty important. There has to be some connection between you and what you're being present with. If, uh, if there's not a connection there, then like Ravani Ra was saying, it's just, uh, you can have some kind of concept in your head. Well, I, I think I'm tuning into such and such, but it's really gonna be just a fantasy. I mean, nothing real is going to take place from that because you haven't established the uh, basic platform out of which the relationship can take place. Okay, and so taking it from this uh, idea of that it's just a fantasy, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, well, it's part of what our existence is, so I don't have to say it like that, but uh, we feel that um, we're so disconnected from everything and um, we have to use our imagination to actually feel what that is, uh, like we're in the inheritance of these things, and you know, like saying, "Well, it's like it's my mother, and it's like you know, God the Father, and that kind of thing." <clears throat> well, this is uh, the, we're asking you to be in this place that we've just described, which is off of the surface, and. And saying that this province that we're speaking about is the province of the creator. It's a place of creation. It is the place of the imaginal uh, that actually can uh, resonate um, with the ideas and then bring them into fulfillment uh, as we uh, realize what that uh, relationship is of the son of the divine or the daughter of spent almighty um, and um, one thing that helps us to get there as Azar Bash was saying earlier is that desire um, you know many of the things that we uh, experience in life are those soul creating soul enhancing things that often are very difficult. Uh, and those desires that are brought out so strongly, let's say, uh, by the pandemic, having our children far away, ours in California, our grandchildren far, far away, you know, that heart is just opened out. 
and used, this situation is used for the ultimate um, <clears throat> mending of things, besides getting a hug from those sweethearts that we miss so much, it is, well, who do we miss the most? And who is the divine missing the most? Pull those desires out. Allow them to just get completely on fire and see uh, what is it that it is that we want so much, so much? What is it that we are uh, pulled away from? Well, it's everything. We were just mentioning it. <laughs> we are pulled completely out from everything that we are a part of in this way that we are seeing. But how can we get to that place? Through the heart. It is through the heart and through the desires of the heart going to the depths of that feeling. Uh, and, um, and just being convinced sometimes by other people that are speaking to us here uh, that it is possible, that it is, uh, that we are creating things anew in each moment and that we are the actual sons and daughters of the divine, that we are the being of the divine. So uh, this whole series has been about presence and we're coming at presence from different angles, uh, talking about different kinds of presence. And so this being the last in the series, we'd like to get a little more advanced uh, in how we're understanding presence. So in previous classes, we've talked about uh, in the process of awakening, it's important for us to realize ourselves as being multidimensional beings. And there's stages of that. The first stage is just to uh, develop the ability to experience subtle realms. So to uh, tune into the angelic realm, tune into the jinn realm and so on. And then uh, to the next step is what Pierre Valak called toggling, experiencing a circulation between two realms. So it could be the light of the manifest, our manifest being and the, our angelic self going back and forth. But a further stage is realizing, as Hazrat and I Khan said, that we exist in all of these realms and <clears throat> it's all going on at the same time. And the language sort of fails us here, but it's as close as we can get. <clears throat> and there's always an ongoing circulation of light between and throughout all of these realms. It's happening all the time. So I'd like to refer to another thing that we've talked about before. Uh, we talked about the Barzog, the interface. We talked about the limit to how much information can come through in either direction from us to the transcendent, from the transcendent to the manifest, and that's related to the size of the interface. And what makes the interface a larger size? What we bring to it. So when we bring our multidimensional realization of ourselves to that interface, now there's vastly more that can come through in both directions. So all this is segueing into the uh, a much deeper degree of presence we make possible when we can come into a state of relational unity. Remember, that means light is circulating back and forth between ourself and what we are experiencing. We don't lose our identity. We're not in a dualistic state either, but it's going back and forth. But if we bring our multidimensional awareness of ourself into that relationship, now so much more can come through. So we could talk about uh, presence uh, in a kind of a, a linear sense where Ravani Ross started out. I mean, we're separated from uh, what we're experiencing, but now imagine presence happening uh, in a multidimensional state. So there's a multidimensional connection between ourself and what we're experiencing. And there's multiple dimensions of light circulating back and forth. So just take a moment here and not try to figure it out uh, mentally, but just see if you can feel, what does that feel like? What does it feel like to really be 
opened up. Uh, those of you that sign on early I always have a message. Uh, use the quiet time to let go of the cares of the day and become centered in the fullness of your being. Well, this is the fullness of your being. So just take a moment and let yourself feel that. See if you can feel a multidimensional presence with us, but also with the other people that are participating uh, in this call tonight. So just take a moment. Now allow yourself to remain in this state as you continue. You know, sometimes we we venture out into something that's new for us. We kind of think, well, act as if you do. You know, I'm not quite sure how to do this, but let me just do the best I can and you know something might just uh, take over like oh now I, this is really real I'm really doing this <clears throat> um, and I was thinking of as we were doing this that people who tune in to this later on you know we can even think about them and thinking that we're experiencing them tuning into them Maybe having knowing some things about them, maybe just having feeling of goodwill for them, uh, and say, well, you know, maybe I really can do this. Uh, I'm experiencing that, uh, and you know, even some of the science experiments that Sandra Bosch has told us about. Uh, this definitely does change things that we can change. If you talk about random number generators. Uh, changing it between this time and that time and that's the only time that it would change so being very precise even with our consciousness um, so <clears throat> it's just a wonderful thing to um just to have that confidence and see what how far can you go with that what kind of feedback do you get from that from uh, working with energy in this kind of way so with this kind of presence too, when we think of it in this particular way that I introduced a little bit earlier, we think of, uh, we are that image that is reflected upon this mirror of the manifestation, uh, but we really are connected with everything else. Well, with this kind of presence, then the things that we do are opened out into the experience of beings in other realms, uh, be beings, the angelic beings, beings of light, experiences of in, in worlds of light. Uh, why? Because we're acting from, again, as I said before, where we really are. We're acting from the fullness, as you were saying, of who we are. <clears throat> and that makes all the difference. Even if there's just one being that is thinking this way, uh, 
this being now is connected with uh, everything there is and begins the circulation where there hadn't been circulation before because everybody else was thinking, well, like looking at the boxes right here on the screen and thinking, oh no, those people are in their different worlds. They are not related. And, well, okay, no, I know they are. <laughs> they are. We are related, we are in the same universe. And I know that. Um, so that kind of um, overriding of the old way of thinking is something to definitely invest in. Yes, and uh, back to the idea of entanglement uh, in physics. If you have two particles that are entangled, one has an upspin, one has a downspin, and you flip the spin of one, the other one changes. But they've proven that this effect is it's called non-local. So you can put the two particles at any arbitrary distance, uh, and the change will happen faster than the speed of light, faster than the time it would take light to travel from one to the other. So there's no known mechanism of a signal that could be sent from one to the other to make that change happen simultaneously. Well, and, and they've demonstrated that entanglement can take place with two particles that never even existed at the same physical time. So a particle can be entangled with something uh, that was created after the first particle was destroyed, which is very mind boggling, I think. But we can take generalize from this that uh, we can be in this state of entanglement uh, or relational unity with beings in the past or in the future. It's not dependent upon time. So we can think about uh, presence that's uh, transtemporal. It's not dependent upon two things being present at the same moment of time. And it's also transspatial. Uh, it doesn't matter what distance you know, two people are apart. And we all know this. I mean, uh, you know, someone that we love and feel a deep connection with, sometimes we have an awareness of something's happened to them, even if we're very far away from them. Uh, and because that link is not one that's taking place on the physical level of manifestation. It's taking place in this place where Bonnie Ra was talking about of being suspended, freed, freed from the, uh, the base of just usual time and space. So these interactions can take place. We can experience presence that is not dependent upon either space or time. And even we can experience presence that's not dependent upon uh, the distinction between the manifest and the transcendent. So we can be present to something in a subtle realm of reality and also be in a state of relational unity with that. So we have so many more possibilities at our disposal, you could say in our uh, toolbox than we probably were aware of. And it takes some practice to learn how to be able to use these. I have a suggestion. <clears throat> so whatever meditation that you were thinking about I know you, there's several. Um, I wanted to add to that in thinking this way that <clears throat> as we do this, let's experience the energy that is coming to us uh, as there's a circulation uh, that we are now feeling, uh, let's say, the light that is being thought of by the other being, but the other being is this being, is your own being. So, so, so not only are we going to feel that we are um, experiencing the radiance of our being, let's say, that the other part of us is feeling, but we're feeling the radiance from that side on this, in this being. So there'd be a real circulation. Do you think we could start with that? Well, uh, I'm glad you said that because I wanted to uh, make a mention of something that's directly related to that. So you may recall in past series of classes, we talked about Tao Wheel, 
which means harmonic perception. And uh, Kerbalayev would describe that as uh, being able to see that which transpires behind that which appears. He would talk about like, if you sit with a rose, instead of just experiencing the uh, what comes to your physical senses of the rose or your concepts or memories about roses, you're going to a deeper level where you're experiencing the archetypal reality of the rose. But I think uh, our tendency, even with that, is probably to think about, well, here we are sitting with this rose and somehow we're raising our consciousness up where we can see over here and experience this deeper reality. But it's still dualistic in a sense. Yeah. It's not as dualistic as it was, but still dualistic in a sense. So I would maintain the only way we can truly experience Tao Wheel, to truly experience the deeper reality uh, of anything, a person, something in nature, ourselves on a subtle level or whatever, is if we are also in that state uh, that incorporates that opened up aspect of our own being. So we have to meet what we're experiencing with the same degree of dimensionality as what we're experiencing has. Otherwise, we couldn't perceive it. Just like the people in Flatland couldn't see the three-dimensional beings. They could only see the intersection that came through. They'd see circles getting smaller and larger and so on. Uh, but if they had the capacity to awaken to three-dimensional consciousness, then they'd be able to perceive it. Well, this is the same kind of, of idea. So, uh, and what Ravani Ra was describing is, is great because the, uh, there is this twofold circulation of light. Uh, and again, our language doesn't have good words and I can't do it with my hands. It's not back and forth. It's like every part is impacting every other part all of the time. <laughs> and every part is changing every other part all the time. And we can uh, place our consciousness kind of uh, in different aspects of that process going on. So we can have the focus be more from quote, our end of the experience, which would be more highlighting what's coming to us from what we're experiencing. But because we're in this state of relational unity, we could just as easily experience what the rose is perceiving with us. How's the rose perceiving this human uh, trying to understand it? So we can. I love that part of it because that's the surprise part, you know, the new addition to it. Because we felt from our side many different ways, but here's the, you know, really reaching for that rose, feeling that rose uh, experience, uh, uh, the light of the rose uh, and the desire of the rose for us. That's the part that, you know, I think is so amazing and new. Yes, and in this last part of this series, we're hopefully integrating a lot of threads that have come through many, many classes. Those who, some of you have been with us throughout this whole, long series of classes over a couple of years now, I guess. Uh, so let me recapture my thread yeah. here. Uh, yes, it's that we talked about everything being Gabriel. Everything is seeking to announce itself. So everything is seeking to reveal its unique aspect of divinity. And why is that? Because everything uh, is seeking to fulfill the reason for its creation is for the divine being to understand him herself in a way that could only take place through us, through each of us, through anything in existence, through an atom. Uh, so everything is seeking to reveal itself. Uh, and at the same time, everything is seeking to know the divine being through every other manifestation of the divine being and there's no end to it so everything is seeking uh, to uh, participate in the kind of the current the wave the wave that's cresting 
of the uh, unfolding revelation of divinity in existence that is enabled by awakened beings in existence, being able to connect the two sides, being able to uh, uh, activate the circuitry, uh, so to speak, that enables this uh, twofold circulation of light and not just the same light going down and back, the light that returns is always transformed. And that's true for the descending and the ascending light to manifest and transcend it, but it's equally true in the light that comes from us to anything else in manifestation in the light that returns to us, that light is always transformed. And so there's no end to uh, what is revealed of the divine being. Uh, and what is revealed is not something that was just sitting there waiting to be seen. It's actually created in the process of this relationship. So talk what, about freshness of the eyes. Yeah. The freshness of everything. It's all refreshed, all every moment, all refreshed. And feel the desire in this too. And the fulfilling of that desire at the same time as the desire is getting stronger. It's incredibly beautiful. Why don't we do this for a while? We close our eyes and keep that circulation going. That aching and fulfillment and aching and fulfillment. So what I'd like to uh, have us do in the time we have left uh, for this session is to, uh, you know how sometimes uh, if you uh, go to a, a gourmet restaurant, they'll have the tasting menu, get a little sample of this, a little sample of that. So we're going to have a little tasting menu of different ways of working with presence. And you can take any of these uh, and work with them uh, for much longer periods of time, if you like, on your own later. So the first one, I'd like for you to think about a time in the past when you were going through a difficult spell in your life. And I mean, if it was something really, really traumatic and maybe you got therapy for it and so on, that wouldn't necessarily be the thing to pick for this, but just pick something, maybe not quite that heavy duty, but some something, a period of life that you were having difficulty with. It could be when you were young, could be when you were a child uh, that you think, well, if I'd only known back then, some of the things I've learned over the years, things would have been a lot easier for me. And now <clears throat> what I'd like you to do is close your eyes and 
because we can experience this entanglement, this uh, presence that isn't dependent upon time. We can experience this with our own self uh, existing at a different time in our life. So first, just begin by uh, seeing yourself back then in this uh, challenging circumstance. And now imagine you're sitting with yourself. And this isn't going to be done with words. This is just going to be done with allowing presence to open and ask yourself, what quality is it that would have been so helpful if you had had that available to you back then? It could be uh, insight, it could be compassion, it could be mastery, it could be any number of things. But whatever it is, feel your present self, really connecting with yourself from the past, free from the limitations of time and space. And you're allowing yourself now to open to that divine quality. So it's not that it's being broadcast from you, your present day self to your self in the past. You're now in a space because of your deep connection with yourself in the past, you're just opening up this quality and it becomes available to your past self. The whole space that your past self is in is infused and suffused with this divine quality. So feel your previous self now just really taking this quality in absorbing it in the depths of your being. Feel something stirring in the consciousness of yourself in the past, a realization that this situation would pass. But someday in the future, you will have grown and learned many things and feel confidence and able to handle challenges that come your way. But feel yourself, your past self now, having this confidence that that previous time you feel now that there's a very deep circulation of light that takes place between your present sense of self and your past sense of self. You don't feel separated at all. And you can, as we leave this focus on this experience, you can continue to let this light circulate, even though it will be in the background of your consciousness. And now choose a great being that you feel an affinity with. It could be Christ, Buddha, Moses, Shiva, any number of beings, a master, a saint, a prophet. 
find here. Feel that you're coming to the Barzakh. This great being is meeting you there. You bring him to the Barzakh, your awareness of yourself as a multi dimensional being, not limited to existing in a particular time or space, or even a particular vibrational level of existence. In the fullness of yourself to be present with this great being. And at first, you feel the radiance of this being, just soaking it in. You feel the love, the wisdom, passion to come into this state of relational unity with this being. And you become aware that the light is not just coming from this being to you. The light is flowing from you to this being. The light that carries the seeds of the unique wisdom that can only come from you. So now, as I described earlier, you can shift your focus To perceiving this being experiencing you, how this being sees you, what this being feels and is gifted with by the light that comes from you, that brings to this being something that he or she could never access except by connection with you particular aspect of the unity. And as the Sufis say, when two presences come together, Third presence is born. So now something is born from this. Something is open from this that now becomes available to all beings who can experience this connection. Now allow this circulation of light to continue, but now move into the background, the focus of your consciousness. And we're gonna make one more shift. Go all the way back to that image of Osrin Ait Khan talking about the divine central sun, which for our souls being a ray of that sun. talked about how at the start of our spiritual journey, we identified with the far end of that ray in manifestation and thought that was all there was to ourself and thought the divine was something far away and separated from ourself. Gradually, in the course of our awakening, we came to realize that we are all the parts of the ray all the levels of existence that that ray passes through. And unlike the way we think about the light that comes from the sun being a 
one-way process from the sun to the earth. This ray conveys the same light, the same ray that conveys the light that descends also carries the light that returns. It transforms light. So now, come to the bars up once again. This time, What's on the other side is what Ibn Arabi calls our personal Lord, a Rob, our unique aspect and connection to the one being. And we're bringing our multi dimensional self to this meeting. We're enabling this multi-dimensional presence to take place, this emergent presence that continually unfolds between our human and divine aspects. Now tap into that desire Ravani Ra was referring to earlier, that ishk that we have for the beloved, but also the ishk that the beloved has for us. Inside longing to come closer and closer to the other. Each side experiencing the light that comes from the other. And the delight of the divine side. The series was called the opening of presence. So Christmas is close, the divine is opening the present that we give by that light that returns from us to the divine, that enables the divine to know him herself in a new way. Imagine this being that's described as having always existed, being eternal, now discovering something new. What delight, what joy, what surprise, what gratitude. And the same is true on our end of things. There's no end to our discoveries. What takes place in the revelation of divinity through our being, in our being, and by means of our being present to every aspect of ourself and to every aspect of the divine being that we encounter, whether it's in this world or, or subtle realms. Everything in the universe is continually pouring out blessings to everything else in the universe, waiting to be seen, waiting to be known, waiting to love and be loved. Ravani Ra found a few beautiful lines from a Rumi poem. This would be the perfect time for it. A person blended into God does not disappear. 
he or she is just completely soaked in God's quality. Do you need a quote from the Quran about that? Well, here it is. All shall be brought into our presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.